There are thousands of DOS games. Most of them are terrible. I play one selected at random with a 20 minute time limit and record it live. This is the result. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another random DOS game show and this is Philosopher's Quest by Peter Kilworth. And it says published in 1987, but that's actually incorrect. This DOS version was published in 1987 by Topologica, but the actual game Philosopher's Quest, I had a look at it, and it turns out that this was a mainframe interactive fiction game released in the 70s. So, really, really old. It's another case, I think Eliza was similar, of an interactive fiction game or interactive AI in Eliza's case being released way, way earlier for mainframes than it ever was for DOS. So let's begin. Magic wands can be dangerous things. The one you find in the junk shop off Market Street is no exception. It's a mistake to wave it while the old shopkeeper's back is turned. Instantly the atmosphere turns inside out, taking you with it. Then it twists back again, dumping you back inside the shop. But a strangely altered shop indeed. No windows, precious little stock, and no shopkeeper either. You're in part of a cave system, to judge from the walls, ceiling, and floor. And of course, you know, that's a staple of early interactive fiction. Labyrinthine cave systems and so on. So press any key to continue. I've hit the any key. As you pause, uncertain what to do, a voice seems to weasel through the back of your skull. Go and seek the treasure, mortal, and bring it back here in payment for misuse of my wand. You will need every ounce of cunning to deal with the serpent in the Garden of Eden, the ancient mariner, the invalid old lady, the whale, and other problems too difficult to name. A word of warning, it is dangerous to travel in the dark. Well, that's true, you might get eaten by a Gru. One last thing. Read my notice. The words begin to fade from your conscious mind. The temporary paralysis that has gripped your limbs since you waved the wand eases. And you begin to realise that what happens now is up to you. Good luck. Excellent writing, right off the bat. Okay, so I think this is a conversion into a more palatable interactive fiction engine. I might be wrong, but let's get reading, because that's what we'll be doing a lot of. You're standing in a small shop, which normally has various goods displayed for sale. Areas of a shop are obviously intended for the display of treasure. Above an exit, south hangs a large sign, which reads, oh, is this the notice? Adventurers, please note only two implements may be removed from this shop under penalty of death, so choose carefully. All right, so we have to choose two things. Now, let's have a read. A piece of sausage is curled up here. Oh, I could go for a bit of sausage. There is a fluffy lace-edged cushion here. A small tea bag is lying on the ground. Well, I don't drink tea. There is an aqua lung with a full tank of oxygen here. <laughs> <laughs> it turns on automatically upon contact with water. Well, the game mentioned a mariner, so I think that's kind of important. Uh, there's also a bunch of keys here. Okay, so I think we'll take the aqualung. Take aqualung. Yep, aqualung taken. That works. Take cushion then. We'll take the cushion. And obviously the keys will be needed unless they're red herring. Um, so this operates quite similar to how you would, you know, use ordinary interactive fiction games. So what we can do now is we can go inventory. So we've got some keys, a cushion, an aqualung with a full air supply. What happens if I say take all? Piece of sausage in a small tea bag. <laughs> As you leave the shop, a thunderous voice intones, I warned you, 
The sibilant hiss of twenty synchronized lasers is the last thing you hear as you collapse to the floor mortally wounded. You twit! <laughs> You've departed this world, alas. You scored zero points out of a maximum of 315. Would you like another game? Yes. Okay. So we'll take the aqualung. Take the keys and take the cushion. And then we'll head south. What? I, I, I don't get it. I took three items, right? Uh... Only two implements. Oh, right. Take aqua lung. Take keys. We, we'll leave the cushion. It is pitch dark. Uh-oh. We're going to die here, aren't we? Um, let's see. Um, inventory. Huh. I wish we had a, a lamp or something. I don't think a lamp was an option in the in the shop, was it? Uh, let's continue going south. It's still pitch dark. Um, now I'm really stuck. Oh, so we, we managed to get somewhere, I guess. You're on a sandy beach to the east of an enormous cliff, which bars the way to the north everywhere except a small cave entrance at its base. Rocks to the south and east block these routes effectively. There's a ledge vertically above you on the cliff, but far too high to reach. A track exits west, parallel to the cliff. There's a purple star drawn on the face of a cliff. That probably means something important. Um, let's see. Let's go north, uh, east. Can't go east, west, uh, down. No. Okay, so we'll we'll head south again. Uh, track exits west, so if we go west, you're standing on the east-west beach just south of a sheer cliff, which has a ledge visible high above you in the south. To the south lies the sea, looking particularly inviting, except for the buzzing noise from above it. Ooh. A long horizontal plank is visible some way above you. Like the cliff, it runs east-west. It ends above a contraption too far away to the west to see properly. Right. I'm going to leave it here, because obviously I have scored zero and I'm terrible at interactive fiction, but honestly, Philosopher's Quest, for all of its age, is well put together. There's some really interesting descriptive text and writing. It berates the player for making stupid decisions, which I'm always in favour of, and... I don't know much about interactive fiction, but given its age, I would suspect that it's one of those progenitor titles that was massively influential to the likes of Zork and Hitchhikers and so on, and Enchanter, you know, later down the line. If you're into interactive fiction, then here's another one that you may not have played, because it came out in the late 80s on DOS, rather than earlier, I think it was only mainframes and BBC micros and stuff like that that it was on before that. And if you're like me, bumbling around interactive fiction games really badly, what's wrong with you? Seriously though, I've hundreds of other games that are graphical on the channel, feel free to take a look. And if you like what you see there, you can always subscribe. And if you know how to philosophize with the best and complete the philosopher's quest, you may be one of my wonderful Patreon folk. The secret cabal that knows how to perform effectively in interactive fiction. Look at those great names. So obviously I scored zero and barely scratched the surface here, but that was because there was a bird tweeting outside my window, distracting me. That's clearly the reason. Until next time.